So, I, uh, let's look at uh, the concept of power spectrum uh, and especially we, this is uh, relevant as I am going to show for stationary stochastic processes. Remember, a stochastic process is a collection of waveforms uh, with respect to <coughs> time. These are different realizations, right? And here you have a time. And uh, at least for a deterministic signal, you are familiar with uh, the concept of uh, energy and the uh, frequency domain representation. For example, if you have a signal f of t, and we, defy, we, <coughs> we want to know how the energy is distributed in the frequency domain, distribution of energy. So if you look at Fourier transform, which is the integral of ft, e raised to minus j omega t dt, this is the way Fourier transform is defined. So the question is, <coughs> what is its uh, usefulness with respect to interpreting the, uh, uh, the distribution of energy in the frequency domain? And uh, from here, you also get the most useful relation is the Parseval's relation, which is energy, of course, can be represented as uh, ft squared dt. Or it can also be represented as f omega squared d omega. <coughs> so, uh, if, so if you plot f omega, Suppose we plot, rather than f omega, suppose I plot the absolute value of f omega squared. Then you see, looking at this expression, now this picture makes sense. Remember, this is only a definition. So it's a physical meaning is clear from this picture. Look at what it says. Whatever is the energy of here, which you know, you have a physical sense of it, that energy is also contained here. So because look at this, the total energy is distributed in the frequency domain because if you plot f omega squared, the <coughs> area under that must be representing piece of energy. So the, if you integrate this curve from minus infinity to plus infinity, you get the whole energy. So if you integrate, if you look in this region, and if you have a large integral here, then you know that for this signal, for, for example, suppose it was like this. That means most of its energy is concentrated in this band, and we call this signal to be a band pass signal. So that's the usefulness of the of Fourier transform. So we want to see how to <coughs> how does the Fourier transform come in here. So these are <coughs> specific realizations, right? So there are two variables. One is in time, the other one is various uh, realization. The, representing the randomness. So let me <coughs> take a time interval here. And uh, so let's say this is from t to minus t. So the time interval is of course 2t. And let me begin to do something like this and see how to make sense out of it. So I'm going to define xt omega to be minus. So following the expression here, look, Fourier transform is the function multiplied by e raised to minus j omega t dt. So this is x of t e raised to minus j omega t dt. And but I'm only <coughs> looking at for the time being. I'm I'm uh, I'm only looking at the uh, re, uh, the realizations over minus t to t. So I put the limits as minus t to t. And since I'm interested in either energy or power, I am going to look at the absolute value squared. <laughs> Remember, this could be complex. This is certainly complex. And uh, low. And consequently, for every omega, this is this could be a complex number. Uh, same thing here. Yeah, uh, if this signal has arbitrary shape, this could be complex. But of course, absolute value squared is a real number. So what we see here is the energy distribution versus frequency, right? <clears throat> so similarly, this is an absolute value. You could interpret this as uh, at least uh, uh, getting some ideas from the deterministic case. We could say 
this is in some sense uh, uh, some representation of in either energy or power at this frequency omega. But the problem is, look at this. For every t, this is a random variable, right? So you could think of this as a linear operation. So you could still say that this is a random variable. So this is random, this is random. This, this is the square of a random variable. So this is, of course, absolute value squared of minus t to t, x of t e raised to minus j omega t dt. So, so uh, uh, following from there, this is uh, energy. But this is uh, random because this is just representing a, a particular, this could be one of these realizations. So one way to get rid of the uh, random is you average over all the realizations and that's what we mean by expected value. So if you take an expected value here, this gives you the average energy computed at that particular frequency computed from minus t to t. So of course I should do an expected value here also. So this is the average energy. And as you will see, what makes more sense is the average power. So I'm going to divide this by, remember this was computed using information from minus t to t. So I'm going to divide by the duration. Uh, so I'm going to divide here also by uh, duration, one over two t. Let me rewrite this there. So I'm going to call this uh, pt omega, which is <laughs> expected value of xt omega squared divided by t. This p is for power. So this is the average power computed over the duration minus t to plus t. So this is going to be 1 over 2t expected value of <coughs> integral minus infinity to plus infinity x of t e raised to minus j omega t dt squared. Any questions? So, so far uh, we just found the instantaneous or instantaneous value of the energy divided by time to get the instantaneous power. Then we took the, this being a random variable, we took its expected value. We have the expression on the right side. So you can certainly call this the average power at, the, at that particular frequency. Hello? So let me expand this uh, square and see how much this simplifies. So this is 1 over 2t expected value of, there are two integrals, right? First integral is x of t1 e raised to minus j omega t1 dt1. So this is one integral. And then there is the same integral but with the star because of the absolute value squared, right? Square is here outside, right? So <laughs> this of course I'm going to write it. You, since I want to mix up the integrals, you don't want to use the same variable here. Remember, it's just, oh, so I will use something else. e raised to minus j omega t2 dt2. Remember, this is not minus infinity. We are using the information from a minus t to plus t at both the places. We will go to infinity pretty soon, but because I used different symbols, I can mix up the two integrals. So this is 1 over 2t, expected value of double integral, minus t to t, minus t to t, x of t1, x star of t2. Why star? Because this star will come and hit here. And let me take this expected value inside. Okay. So this is the only quantity with expected value. Then you see this is plus, so this will be, this star will come here. This will, this minus will become plus, right? The star will hit both. So you have e raised to minus j omega t1 minus t2 uh, dt1 dt2. Okay, and what is this quantity? That's the autocorrelation function. And I'm already assuming the process to be a wide sense stationary process. So this, uh, so let's see what wide sense stationary. Uh, that's what I mean by Uh, 
<laughs> so that's an autocorrelation function. This is Rxx uh, t1 comma t2 in general. So if it is not white sun stationary, we still have all this is true. This much is true. But here, if you want, you can write this as Rxx t1 minus t2, right? So when I substitute this, this expression now goes 1 over <coughs> 2t, double integral, Rxx uh, t1 minus t2, multiplied by e raised to minus j omega t1 minus t2, dt1 dt2. You remember, we had, look at the right side. Right side, you only, even though there have two integrals, it's, we only, the integrand is only in terms of t1 minus t2. Let me call this to be tau. And we have done similar problems like this. <coughs> so this is integrating in a rectangle, right? I mean, in, in fact, in a square, this is t1, this is t2, and we are integrating <coughs> over t1 minus t2 equal to tau. Uh, so when you make a slight uh, change to tau to d tau, it will be another line. So this is t1 minus t2 equal to, let's say, tau plus delta tau. So when tau changes to, when uh, t1 and t2 changes by small amount, tau changes only by uh, delta tau. But t1 minus t2 will t1 minus t2 along this will be the same, right? t1 minus t2 is tau. <coughs> so t1 changes from minus t to t. T2 change uh, t2 also goes from minus t to t. But t1 minus so if if you look along, if, the, if there is only new variable tau, then tau varies like this. <coughs> so you can see. When uh, t is uh, t2 is minus t and t1 is t, uh, the one extreme will be 2t and the other extreme will be minus 2t. So my point is <coughs> that integral, if you want, you can rewrite in terms of uh, one integral in terms of delta tau or tau, right? So <coughs> see <coughs> this one. Look, you can integrate it this way. You can take small regions and sum it up here, or you just integrate this strip and move the strip from here to here. That's one and the same thing. So because we are <coughs> the, we are only interested in uh, the integrand is in terms of t1 minus t2. Uh, so the uh, only thing you need to find out is what is this area because <coughs> so when anybody we went through this right. So what, how does it work? So let's say we put uh, t2 equal to 0, then this point will be what? Anybody? This point will be? t2 is 0, so t1 is equal to? Tau. So this is tau, this is capital T up to here, right? So this, this is? Yeah, tau minus t. So this is also tau minus t, right? So how much is this? This whole thing is t, right? So that's t minus tau minus t. So that will be 2t minus uh, tau. It doesn't matter whether it's on this side or that side, right? See that? So this is tau minus t. So the way I have drawn tau is greater than t. And uh, so this will be tau minus t and this will be t minus tau minus t which is 2t minus tau. So <coughs> that will be this. So the area of this big uh, triangle, so we have triangle 1 minus uh, big triangle minus small triangle, right? Big triangle is this. So you have one triangle which is like this and another triangle which is uh, like this, right? So the area of this triangle is what? This uh, Remember, base and height are the same. So base multiplied by height by 2, right? So this is 2t minus uh, tau, uh, the whole squared, minus 2t minus tau, let's say plus delta tau, the whole squared, right? 
So when you subtract 2t minus tau squared goes away, the middle term is, oh, uh, there's also half, right? Why are you not saying? Base multiplied by two, half ab, right? All right, so if you expand this, the middle term is 2 multiplied by 2t minus tau multiplied by delta tau. Two and half cancels. Uh, plus, of course, delta tau squared by 2. But this we are going to assume is very small. So the bottom line is the difference of the two triangles is this area is this. So I can, uh, sim I can put the... <coughs> So we just computed this area. So Rxx tau multiplied by this, instead of dt1 minus dt2, I'm going to put uh, this area. So this is going to look like Rxx uh, tau e raised to minus j omega tau. Then I have <laughs> 2t minus tau. Then I have d tau and the whole thing divided by 2t. What happened to, where is this 2t from? Look here. This is, this is why if I don't divide this by 2t, I get energy. Energy divided by the duration is power. So this quantity is uh, power, but computed over using the interval minus t to t. So of course, uh, I'm just going to copy it here. So this is pt of omega now reads minus 2t to 2t rxx tau e raised to minus j omega tau 1 minus tau over 2t d tau. <laughs> Look at here. So let's not lose track of it. Let's go to the second step here. We are squaring an arbitrary quantity, right? Fourier transform. So this quantity is certainly positive, right? For every frequency. Because look here, we are taking the square and taking the expected value. So this is zero, uh, po positive. So every, <coughs> of course, this is non-negative, right? So the right side, every step, you can write it as <coughs> non-negative, right? So this quantity is non-negative. So this quantity is non-negative for every t. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push uh, t to infinity to, co to cover the entire stochastic process. So remember, to make sense initially, we just took a, look here, we took a duration. Now I'm going to push this t to, co to cover the entire stochastic process. So that will give you the power distribution versus frequency. Uh, just following these ideas here. So look here, because it is done, when you push t to infinity, this becomes minus inf infinity plus infinity. How about here? Tau is always less than 2t. So this fraction is all, right? When t goes larger and larger, this quantity becomes closest to zero. <coughs> so when this happens, I'm going to call this pt of <coughs> omega to be sxx omega, or you can call it p of omega. So s is for the spectrum. X is suddenly to remind us that we are dealing with the process autocorrelation. I could have put an X here if you wanted. <coughs> Look at the right side. So this becomes minus infinity to plus infinity, Rx x tau, e raised to minus j omega tau, d tau. But this is non-negative. Look here. Uh, the Fourier transform is not, in, in general, if you have a, so that's of course the Fourier, trans, that expression and this expression are the same. But we did not start with the Fourier transform of, <coughs> we started with something physical here. But it ultimately led to the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. So now you can see another significance of the autocorrelation function. So, Bottom line is the Fourier transform of an arbitrary function is not going to be, could be complex. There is, there is a Fourier transform of any autocorrelation function is real and positive. Look at there, it is positive. Not only real, positive. <coughs> so if you, you don't need to take the absolute value. If you have done it right, this is always going to look like this. So 
So if you want, you can write this notation. Fourier transform, I mean the power spectrum and the autocorrelation function form a Fourier transform pair. Now this of course makes sense. Uh, let me also tell you why this makes sense. Maybe you remember the inverse Fourier transform relation. Look at here. If you have the Fourier transform, you can also extract Ft from the inverse relation, right? f of omega e raised to plus j omega t d omega. So that being a Fourier transform, if you are given the spectrum, how will you find the autocorrelation function? Anybody? So look at here, Fourier transform is, I mean, spectrum is the Fourier transform of autocorrelation. So autocorrelation is the inverse, inverse which we'll use. So autocorrelation function is the inverse of the power spectrum. So it's S omega, e here, remember this is plus now, and one over two pi. Now look at the top line, an interesting factor. Let me put tau equal to zero here. So you get Rxx zero. What is on the right side, anybody? Tau is zero, so what do you get? So what is that quantity on the right side? Look here, that's going to be this, right? Area under the, area under that a power spectrum, right? But you also know this quantity physically. This is what, expected value of? What, Rx x zero is, well, Xt absolute value squared, right? So look, this is of course, you know the, if, if you think of this as the voltage across some unit. So this is the average power being consumed. And look at here, so if this is the average power, <coughs> this must be what? This is the area under that whole curve. So this must be representing the power versus frequency. Because if you integrate it, you get the total power. So we can call this graph to be the power spectrum. So what is this quantity representing here? So this is omega 1 to omega 2. This must be representing the power of that process uh, between the frequencies omega 1 to omega 2. <coughs> so power spectrum of a stationary stochastic process X of T. All right, so you absorb the 1 over 2 pi, uh, uh, 1 over, right, there is a 1 over 2 pi, right? You mean here, right? Yeah. So once again, so if you, if the power spectrum looks like this, so what is its meaning? That means most of the power is uh, concentrated in this frequency band, right? That's what the meaning of this is. So two relations, the, the power spectrum is the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function and the, so I'll also write it like this. Our power spectrum is the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function and it will be always non-negative and the autocorrelation function is the symbolically the inverse Fourier transform of uh, the power spectrum. And this will be a non-negative definite function. Now, few, few properties. Now, all the properties of the Fourier transform are applicable here. So remember, Rxx uh, tau has this property, right? Rxx minus a tau star, right? Uh, this, so let's see what the what is the so SXX what is the implication on SXX omega 
So SXX omega is uh, RXX tau e raised to minus j omega tau d tau minus infinity to plus infinity. Now look here, suppose the process is uh, real, x of t is real, then this is true on x of t, right? Then what happens to this uh, expression, anyone? This is always true, right? So if x of t, if, it, if you are considering a real process, rxx satisfies this, right? So this this can this has two terms, right? So I can write this as plus j, what is it? Rxx tau cos omega tau d tau, right? Rxx tau sin omega tau d tau. Then what? Anybody? So what will be the huh? There is nothing, you don't have to replace anything. What is the embo? Look at here. This is an even function. This is an odd function. It doesn't matter what the shape is. So what will be the, this integral? Huh? Anybody? An odd function, I'm sorry, even function multiplied by odd will be what? Even. Wonderful. Odd, sorry. Odd. So odd function integrated on a symmetric region? Remember, it doesn't matter if the function is like this, if you <laughs> integrate, what happens? So this term is gone. For all, uh, for all real processes, there are only th there are restriction is, so the power spectrum for real processes is uh, this. Remember, power spectrum is always positive. Now look at here, what happens in that case if you replace omega by minus omega? There is no omega here, so this becomes cos minus omega t. Cos minus omega t is what? So what is the relation to SXX omega? Anybody? These two, the, I mean, right. So this is, this is also same as SXX minus omega. So if a process is real, the power spectrum is going to look like this. For uh, SXX omega will be even. It is always positive, but it will be even, okay. So these are few properties. Let me just to do one more property. So if the process is real, the spectrum is even. Any questions so far? Hello? Anyone? Hey. Uh, All right. So then you can you can you can probably fix one time instant, and there are many ways to deal with it. But let's deal with the most important case, which is you have Whitesum stationarity. Then how do you define? So the bottom line is Whitesum stationarity. You look at the autocorrelation function, and it's a Fourier transform is naturally going to give you the distribution of power versus uh, frequency. And uh, remember, uh, uh, you, we also learned that Rxx uh, so Let me show you one more proof of this uh, using the power spectrum. Look here. Anybody remembers what is this uh, non-negative definite means what? You put, you put this Rxs into the, this is Rij, put a Ti here. Uh, Tj here, this will be Rij, multiplied by some arbitrary vector A star A, right? This will be what? We said the autocorrelation has the property that this quantity will be always positive. positive. So this is the same as if you expand, you are going to get A, Aj star, Rxx, uh, Ti minus Tj. All right, so uh, of course at this stage it's very difficult to see if you have all these complex numbers, why would this turn out to be real? I'm going to show you that using the power spectrum, it's easy. Let me substitute for the, uh, the Rxx in terms of the power spectrum. 
So remember, we are talking about stationary processes. This is true even if the process is not stationary. But for stationary processes, we have another proof. So this is i equal to 1 through n, j equal to <coughs> 1 through n, ai aj star. Now I'm going to substitute for the autocorrelation as the inverse transform of the power spectrum. So this is SXX omega e raised to, this is your tau, e raised to j omega uh, ti minus tj, right? Whatever is the variable here, this is your tau. So e raised to plus j omega tau, right? Top line there, and d omega. See, I can write this as integral SXX omega uh, summation AI e raised to J omega TI. Then I have summation AJ star e raised to minus J omega TJ, right? Summation AI e raised to J omega TI. I just but look here, this is the complex conjugate of this. This is i equal to 1 through n. So I can write this as minus infinity to plus infinity sxx omega summation ai e raised to j omega ti absolute value squared d omega. This is positive, power spectrum is positive, so the whole thing is positive. So what have we proved? I wanted to prove this. I proved it here. So the autocorrelation, we learned earlier, autocorrelation function is non-negative definite. So if you have discrete time processes, uh, most of this, uh, so the easiest way to deal with this is you have a wide sense stationary process. Remember, we went through all this. So RK, which is expected value of X of uh, <laughs> IT plus X star of I plus KT, right? T2 minus T1, right? This is your, uh, so if you read this as T1, remember discrete time, T is only, T1 is IT, this is your T2, I plus K multiplied by T. So this is, if it is T2 minus T1, which is tau, which will be a function of R of KT, right? I'm going to write it as R of K. So one way to represent this autocorrelation, if you want, is like this, right? You see this? This autocorrelate for a discrete time, white sense stationary processes, autocorrelations are, are defined at only uh, right, only various. Uh, uh, so this is uh, nt, right? Or uh, different time instances, right? Uh, multiples of t. Right, that's what we mean. You sample as one way to realize you sample as stationary process and look at its autocorrelation. If it is white sun stationary, it depends on t2 minus t1, difference of time indices, which is only depends on k. So I'm going to use this notation. So if you want to represent it using the continuous, you can say that the autocorrelation exists only at multiples of capital T. That's the sampling time. So let's take, remember, we already know that the power spectrum is what? The Fourier transform of autocorrelation function. So that means the Fourier transform is a linear operation. So that goes through this sum. So we can do this quickly. And these are constants. So the Fourier transform is on this temporal. What is the Fourier transform of a displaced delta? This is why I asked you to check the Fourier Huh? Fourier transform of delta tau is 1. Delta tau minus kt. 
All right, so <laughs> this is e raised to minus j k omega t. So this must be non-negative because we already established that uh, the Fourier transform of any autocorrelation function is non-negative. So the Fourier, if you have a discrete time system, this is the Fourier transform. Look here. So you compute the autocorrelations, you take a DFT, DTFT, you can find the power spectrum. But the DTFT goes from <coughs> minus infinity to plus infinity. This is not the same as putting here minus n to plus n. We will see that. So at this point, so let me just summarize what we have learned. For a Whitesun stationary processes, we, everything is well defined. What we have seen is if you take a short duration and define its Fourier transform and then take the expected value after squaring it, that quantity has uh, sensible, um, and then divide by 2t, that represents the uh, power at that frequency because the area under that curve, Sxx omega, is the uh, total power from here. All right. So, so this curve is actually, you can see, this curve is as the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. Autocorrelation function is physical. You can compute from the data. So then you take the Fourier transform, you get the power spectrum. Area under the power spectrum, as you can see from here, represents the total power. And this is true whether it is continuous time or discrete time. In the discrete time, the power spectrum is given by the DTFT of the autocorrelation function. 